Last time on the Dirt Hood Shed, you saw that truck totally kick my butt. Not this week. This week, I'm gonna win. Come on, Louie. It feels like just yesterday I was out here fighting with this thing and trying to figure out how to get the steering to work. And it really, it was yesterday. I finally got it functioning. And I think all the parts are in the right places for the most part. Uh, it's got track bar, it's got a drag link, it's got a tie rod, and all the things are like pretty close to working in harmony together. So we're gonna start out right now by trimming up the cross member that I had talked about trimming and moving around some of the bracketry just to give it a little bit more clearance. This guy's got to go back a little bit. This thing has to get cut a whole lot. Basically, we got to finish up everything. We got to mount the steering ram. We've got to do all the hoses. We got to button this thing up and cycle it and see how good or bad it works. I have a feeling it's going to be really good. All right, let's grab my gloves and my glasses and we might as well just start cutting, see what happens. I got my plasma cutter out and plugged in. Basically what we're gonna do is just start trimming away this cross member until we get the up travel we need or until we get the room for the up travel we need. right in my face. Cool. There's some room. Here we go. I was able to cut a ton of metal out of there and didn't catch any of the wiring on fire. Didn't burn the coolant hoses. So it's time to grab the transmission jack and we will jack this thing up and see what clears and what doesn't. All right, I'm gonna work the transmission jack. You guys hang out there and tell me what hits. Okay, here we go. Let's jack this thing up, see if we can get to the bump stops without crashing into anything else. Whew. Track bar just barely clears the diff cover there, but barely is good enough in my book. All right, we are smashed into both of the bump stops. It freaking clears, man. Oil pan clearance is good. Got a little trimming to do here. That all clears. This is good. Let's see if it'll turn or if it creates different problems. That gets farther away. That's good. That gets farther away. Holy cow. We've got full steering lock to lock at full bump. That's so rad. Yes. Little wins. It's all we need. Little wins. So that's very tight at full compression. Very tight, but easily repairable. Pretty close. I'm stoked. This thing is coming together finally. Oh yeah, we got a little contact issue there too. I might, I might end up having to like knock, knock the corner off of this thing a little bit. All right, we have, we have game plans, that's good. Hey yo, dirt heads. I'm back in the shop and it is Thursday. I ended up having to spend a bunch of time editing that last video, but check this out. We are back at it and I wanted to show you where I'm at with it. I went through and I moved this track bar bracket forward just a tiny bit 
to get myself a little bit more clearance on the diff. And then on this side, I cut this one loose and rolled this one back just a little bit to get more clearance uh, between these two at full steering. So this is how I start testing steering setups. I've got one side with a limit strap in it to where it's drooped out as far as that coilover is gonna let it go. I got the other side over here cranked up with the jack and smashing the bump stop. This is actually probably a little farther than it'll actually go in real life. Just kind of over here testing clearances. Um, I've got everything working out and it's working good. The only little clearance issue I have is the, the tie rod crashing into the bottom of this track bar bracket at full lock and full articulation. So that's not bad. I, gotta, I can trim this off and I'll get my space back there. And then with a little bit of fine tuning on the bump stops, this thing is gonna be super good. Oh, I also wanna show you, I ended up cutting this cross member a ton in order to make space for that, uh, that track bar at full compression. I've still got a little bit more trimming to do and then we're gonna get in here and re-brace this and make sure that it's strong again. It's not gonna have as big of a drop as the old one did, but it'll have a little bit of a gusset flange welded back on it, so it should be good to go. Oh, that's hot, holy cow. I've tried picking that up so I could show you guys what I'm about to do. I'm gonna put a glove on. All right, I just made this little gusset and it's gonna go up here and weld to the back of the track bar bracket and then help distribute some of the pressure from the track bar bracket all the way into this cross member. So these little pieces and parts are usually pretty fun to make. And these are the, these are kind of the little details that will ensure that this thing works well for a long time. And more than anything else, make sure it's safe. You gotta remember this track bar has some pretty extreme loads on it, holding the front of the truck, holding the axle center under the front of the truck. It's welded to the frame rail, to the cross member, to the track bar bracket, and I even grabbed a even able to grab a rivet in the middle there. So this thing is tied in all over the place. Back in the shop, borrowing my neighbor's heat lamp and I got my, which one is that? That's my drag link is drying. I've got my track bar over here drying. I got paint going on things. This is a good day. Uh, check this out. This is rad. I've finished welding up this bracket for the track bar and added a whole bunch of little gussets in and plate work and boxed it in and finished that guy up super nice. So I think the next couple of moves I've got to make are going to be finishing this cross member up and then I got to mount the steering ram and that is pretty hopefully going to go pretty smooth. I actually went through my box of parts and I found an old uh, an old clamp for a steering ram so I can clamp this guy on I can weld on tabs on this side and then we should be able to have a steering ram on this thing. All right. Let's get this thing sort of in place and tack it. And then we can figure out the rest. Oh, I think that's my spot. Don't look at the weld. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and tack this thing in place and then we'll put the clamp on the other end and we'll cycle it back and forth and see if we have any clearance issues. I kind of feel like the heim joint and clamp is gonna go hit the diff cover. In the, in the past, I've usually just um, welded tabs onto the tie rod, but the problem there is that if you need to adjust your toe, the tabs might be in the wrong spot because you might end up you know, only needing a half a turn to set your toe and then all of a sudden your tabs are in the wrong spot. So this thing being clamp on will give it the ability to, uh, to spin. So if I need to adjust the toe, I can loosen this clamp, adjust the toe and then tighten the clamp back up. So the steering is straight, which means if I set this it's puking oil on me. If I set this at half, with basically four inches of shock shaft showing, we should be right in the middle of the stroke. Okay, let's see if we can turn the steering wheel both ways. I think this side is gonna be no problem. I feel like, yeah. That side's no problem. That side hits the diff cover pretty hard. And we're not even close. We still have two more inches of travel. I think what I'm gonna have to do is scoot the ram down that way and drill through this bracket and mount it to the bracket, kind of like how these holes are here but this I think is gonna mount on the outside of it. All right, more work, yay. We can do this, this is a piece of cake. We're drilling it out real quick and then we'll test it here in a minute. Cool. This should be pretty simple with just bolting the, the hind joint to it. Cool. Swing all this stuff back together and see if it works. Ready? Let's see. I'm like right in the middle, so it's not, it's going straight ahead and this has has four inches shown on the shock shaft or ram or whatever you want to call it. Got it on level. Let's see how it looks going this way. All right, that's pretty good. Full lock that way. Are we crashing into anything? I don't think so. Hmm. I think we did it. It doesn't crash into anything. And I've got options for like routing hoses that should be able to go up the track bar. All right. I am going to, that's rad, dude. Like we just got the steering ram in in like a matter of minutes. This is cool. And it doesn't crash into things. Sick. All right, where am I at? What's going on? This is good. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next thing. I gotta go check comments on this video I just posted. It's about the, the start of all this madness. We're almost finished. This is going to be a good one. I want to make this video really quick so that we can go and test it and get some wheeling footage. Look at that. Full lock. Passenger. Show full lock driver. There we go. It's coming together. Coming together. 
Check out that rad little mount. I used the one tab as my double shear. That was the tab that they sent me. And then boxed it in real quick. Bolt goes through there. That thing is dialed. Right now I am trying to cut the last little chunk out of this. You can kind of see my old paint line. I'm trying to cut the last little chunk out of that because the track bar actually goes up and wants to hit right there. So I'm using the torch so that I can get in there because it's kind of like a hard angle to get into. And I've got like, I got all kinds of important stuff here. I got to try not to cut. I took my block heater wiring and pulled it out of the way and this other stuff. Let's try not to burn it down. All right, here we go. Fire. I got it. I think I got it. My handy dandy Leatherman. Sick. Got it. I think we left off with me trying to burn my truck down. And sorry Chevy fans, this Ford did not burn down. Still good to go. I went through and cleaned up that gross edge from torching and cutting and grinding on there. So we're getting pretty close. I kind of want to cycle this up and figure out if I can do a little bit of a ridge to reinforce this uh, cross member. Um, I got a call from Freiburger this morning and I got to go and help on a roadkill episode next week. So I need to kind of double time it and see if we can get this thing to cycle before the end of the day. Cause tomorrow I'm getting on an airplane and heading out. So. This should be exciting. I'm stoked that I keep getting those gigs. All right, enough of that. Let's work on this truck. All right, I took the old goldfish box and made a rad template so that we can have a little bit of a gusset back on there and it's out of the way enough that it's not going to come into contact with anything on the axle. And it's far enough back that it won't crash into the steering or the track bar. So let's go and grab some steel to cut that out of. I think I'm going to go back to the old skid plate from Butter Jeep. This thing's like pretty bent and banged up, but it'll work just fine for that piece over there. Paint your hand. Ugh, that is a terrible rough estimate of what I'm supposed to cut. All right, let's cut this out. All right. Got it. Cool, I'll clean that thing up. And then we'll go weld it on the truck. Let's go back to the scrap pile. You want to see something super frustrating? Check this out. So I was on the phone talking to my buddy Mark. I was over here talking on the phone and checking fitment on this cross member. And I hear this. I hear a bolt drop. Lo and behold, on the ground is this little guy. I'm like, that? 
That looks like an exhaust manifold stud and nut. So I grab my little flashlight and I go over here and I go up there. I looked over all of them, but if you look at that cylinder number one, it, it my Ford is breaking itself apart. It's breaking apart while it's not even running. And it's not even like it's that cold or hot or anything in here. I've got the heater set to 56 and my Ford is falling apart. This is, this is ridiculous. Get my gloves over here. Hang on, I'm getting my readers because I'm old. I'm really kind of embracing these things now. I'm like, man, makes me weld like I'm in my 20s again. So this cross member is gonna get welded in, but I'm just gonna kind of do like an inch here and then skip and an inch there. I really don't feel like this thing needs to be welded solid. Whatever this frame is like galvanized with is disgusting smelling. That, that one's pretty ugly. things in there you gotta hit it make sure it's not going anywhere that ain't going nowhere I think that's it for this dirt head shed I got a really rad opportunity to go and work on a roadkill a roadkill shoot next week so I've got to get on a plane at like six in the morning and fly out so and that's going to be it for this episode. I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to go four-wheeling and show this thing off, but we'll be back next week. And uh, this thing has to get done because it has to get off my lift because we need to get started on other projects. We'll see you guys next week. Yeah.